We're back in the Shady Acres Woodshop family room today for an unboxing and an introduction to the new longer LK4X 3D printer. Now I have no idea how to use a 3D printer. I've never been in the same room with a 3D printer, but I've been watching a couple of videos and they look like they could be a fun thing to have. And this is not terribly expensive. I think the price for this is around $300. And what you can make with it, oh my gosh, so many things, thousands of things. Let's get at it. I've got all the parts and tools laid out. I have their assembly video up on on a laptop sitting right next to me here so I know what to do they say this comes 95% assembled so let's see how that goes first thing to do is stand up the gantry and position it where it goes and then lay it over and then there's four screws two for each side and they provide the wrenches Now we attach the filament holder. Filament is what feeds this thing so that it can fit out whatever it is you're trying to make. Filament comes on a big spool that fits on here. Just takes two screws. And what's next? Now it's the filament sensor with two tiny little screws. This tells you when you've run out of filament. I, I, I don't know if it sounds an alarm or what it does, but maybe it stops the machine. Tiny little screws though, boy. I always wonder why these manufacturers choose me. I firmly believe it's because of you, and maybe because I'm so old they want to see if an old guy can do it. And we're getting it done. Easy peasy. Well, I'm embarrassed to say I forgot to turn the camera on for this part. This is the optical sensor. I think for the auto leveling, you attach this wire which was just laying loose underneath here. You attach this connector to it. And I did that after watching the video. And then I, and then I thought, boy, I wonder if I did it the right way. And no, I didn't. See the orange wires on the outside, the blue wires on the inside? I did it just the opposite of that. So now I, I've just changed it now. And I'm about to put it back together. And these are delicate little pins on there that you push that connector into. I guess that's why they have these videos, huh? But they don't, they don't mention anything about it. They don't say it out loud. They just show you what they're doing. No one's talking. This was already attached, this black part here that I'm screwing down. It was already attached. So you take one screw out and loosen the other so you can twist it to get that connector on there. So, another step completed and a catastrophe avoided. Yay! I'm guessing that wire that I just attached is the other end of this wire because they're calling this the auto leveling sensor mount. And it has two screws. They're tiny little things. Can you see what I'm doing here? It's a, it's a metal bracket. It's kind of an L shape, but then it's got more to it than that. And I think what this does is it goes down on the table. There's another part to it. This is just the mount. It goes down on the table and, and tells you when the table is level. This has an auto leveling table, which I guess is real high tech and real important and makes everything real easy. But first, before you can use it, you have to manually level the table so that it knows what's level and what isn't. So that'll be a step here coming up pretty soon. Okay, and then this. This is the sensor itself. The bracket was up here and now this is the sensor and we'll see what we do with that. There's a wire right there. Oh and I see there's connectors on here and then there's a wire right here that it connects to I guess. I don't know how this fits in there but I'm gonna find out. Don't go anywhere. This is gonna take all my concentration. Sorry to pass in front of you here. But this little connector, and it only goes one way it looks like. That other one went either way. Somebody has small hands that devised this little plan. Ooh. 
Got it. Looks like it goes like this. All right, that's one. They don't expect whoever's doing this has arthritis, I can tell you that. Man, my fingers don't bend that little. Yay, success. Woo. So then this little pin comes down and touches the table and it goes up and down. I hope the rest of it isn't so tiny. Now this is one of the coolest parts of the machine is this uh, four inch touch screen that controls all your menus and whatnot. I just watched the video. There's a plug right here and you can see where it goes. They did not plug that in first and it sure looks like it would be easier to do first to me so I'm gonna I'm gonna plug that in and then it takes two screws to mount it okay so that's done now I think it's a whole bunch of wires let me check you're welcome for not having to watch me wire this thing. It was quite an ordeal. I'm wondering if they didn't send me a, a demo model or something. It seems that some of the connections that I was supposed to make were already made. And then this one wire over here, this little wire, is kind of run wrong according to their directions. And I can't figure it. It goes up here and I couldn't figure out how to unplug it. it it's some kind of special connector and I don't have a special tool to unplug it. so. I'm stuck with where that wire is run. I plugged it in. I'm going to turn it on for the very first time. And we're supposed to watch for this little thing here. The uh, auto leveler to turn blue. Let's see if that happens. Yay. More purple than blue. but And here's our touch screen all lit up. Then we're supposed to click tune. And select the heating nozzle. After we get our glasses, it says uh, nozzle temperature. I guess we touch that and we're supposed to turn it to 200. 200 degrees centigrade. Now, I don't know what that is Fahrenheit, but I think it's dang hot. I'm not going to touch it. Then we go back, uh, home, select leveling, select manual, press five buttons, one to five to control nozzle moving to corners of bed. Number one. Okay, it's coming down. It's taking a while, but it's coming. It came all the way down and it touched the bed. Now it's going to corner one I guess. You're supposed to take a piece of paper place it on here under the nozzle and feel for friction. You don't want too much friction but you want some. And then there's a knob under each corner to adjust that friction. So I'm gonna loosen this a little more. Okay that's that's probably good. And we'll go to number two. Now, of course, it doesn't say what weight paper. I always use 24 pound. I, don't, I guess a lot of people use 20 pound. Well, this is pretty boring to watch, so I'll, I'll work on this and I'll bring you back here in a bit. Hopefully, we can, you know, make something. Finally, I got it up and running. Took a little messing around, loading up the software. It comes with two little files. One's a cube, which is what it's printing right now. It's called an XYZ cube, and it's, it's just like a one inch cube that has a X and a Y and a Z on it. And that's because you have your X axis and your Y axis and your Z axis. And if those come out good, then you know you did right. <laughs> So I'm hoping for that. It's been going for, I don't know, it says 20 seconds elapsed time. It's more like uh, maybe 8 minutes by now. I don't know why it says 20 seconds. Stuff to learn. Anyway, it's going. I'll show you the end result. And I'm going to print another little thing. And I'll show you that too later. I think it's just about done with that little cube. 
I just looked up Celsius. The table that it's sitting on, that little cube it's sitting on, was preheated to 60 degrees Celsius. So that's uh, 140, I think it was 142 degrees Fahrenheit. And the nozzle that the filament's coming out of is heated to 200 degrees, and that's 394 degrees Fahrenheit. Just a little bit of interesting information for you. I'll tell you what, can you hear that thing? Very quiet, very quiet. With the TV on, I won't even know it's running. Took 38 minutes. I've been standing here the whole time. <laughs> so there is the little guy. And I just picked him up off of there. He, he wasn't stuck hard. I just picked him up after I let the table cool down a bit. And he just popped right off. That's the bottom surface, what it looks like. And we got a nice clean X. And a nice clean Z. And a nice clean Y. Now if you're at all like me and just have no idea how these things work or what's next or how you do it, you can download files for free from a lot of places and for maybe deluxe files you can pay for them but I've seen some pretty cool stuff that's free and then you come over here and you press file and you decide what do I want to do. Well I already did the cube so I'm going to do this benchy. That's the little boat I was telling you about. And I'm going to click open and I'm going to say yes to start printing. And I'm not going to change anything. It's This is just how the file came. And you can see here, it's heating the table to 60 centigrade. And it's heating the nozzle up to 200, currently at 43 centigrade. And when it, when it gets up there to 200 degrees, and this is at 60, it'll just start printing. And it'll take as long as it takes. This little boat, I don't know exactly how big it is. I'm thinking it's a couple of inches. This little benchy that I'm going to print will probably take a couple of hours. I don't really know. But it's a cute little thing. They sent me some filament. This is a gray color. It's PLA, which I guess is one of the more popular filament. And it's a nice big roll. They sent a little, little tiny, about a 10 inch reel with about 10 bins on it. Let's see here, it's getting ready to go again. Oh, this is another thing. Anyway, you can buy this in a million colors and it's not too terribly expensive. But I'm gonna just use up the black that they sent me. And what it's doing now is the auto leveling. And it does that before every print. And experienced people, that just drives them nuts. They don't like, they don't like to wait. It takes, uh, it takes about five minutes. What it's doing, see, if you can see that little nozzle, it's checking 16 different places on that plate, on that base, on that table. 16 different places. And it just drives the experienced guys crazy. So maybe in a future firmware update they'll change that. Because nothing's changed. I haven't moved it. It just got done printing that little block and now it's going to print something else. And it's, it's a five minute wait while it goes through these 16 steps. And it really kind of goes through 32 steps because it does it twice in each spot. That's the second trip down for that spot and then it'll move over. Just, just how this particular machine works, but it couldn't be more simple and it couldn't be more quiet. I'm, I'm amazed at how quiet it is. Welcome back to the Shady Acres Woodshop family room. It's time to wrap up this review of the longer LK4X 3D printer. And I'll tell you, Right off the bat, I'm impressed. Granted, it's my first one ever. I'm, I don't know a lot about them, but this thing is so easy to use. It's just incredible. It's just incredible. I'll go, I'll go over some of that as we go along. I wanted to show you some of the things I've been printing. They're all pretty small. I'll give you the times as best I can remember them. Uh, some of them not very long, pretty quick, pretty impressive. Some of them unbelievably long. Uh, I don't know what to say about that except that there are ways I've read, I've read online and some of the forums and whatnot, there are ways to make this thing faster, make any 3D printer faster. I have on the table there of the longer, the very first thing I printed, it's a little XYZ box. Now that took, um, I think that took 40 minutes to print. Maybe it was 35 minutes, 34 minutes. I put the two dollar bill there as a size reference for you. This is about a one inch cube and it's just a, a little test sample to see if everything's working. It works slick, it, it looks perfect, I don't see any flaws in it whatsoever. It's great. 
This little boat is what I printed neck uh, for size reference. There's that little cube. They provided a very small amount of black filament with this printer and I ran out of black. A cube printed the boat printed mostly and it ran out so that's why it has a gray top now that's a good thing as it turns out because on the screen over there on the right if i didn't have all my wooden stuff in the way there was a message on there that said out of filament would you like to refill i said yes it said okay extract so i pushed the extract button and it extracted the filament out of the machine i put up the new gray one i clicked on feed it fed it in and it began over and it did it perfectly put that little gray top on top of the black boat and there's nothing wrong with it. it 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 fits great it looks great so i learned how to change filament in the middle of a printing so that's why that was a good thing and it just looks pretty cool don't you think pretty cute little boat it's about three inches long i guess about uh two inches tall the next thing i printed was this little folding hook you put two screws in it against the wall and that bottom part there flips up folds up so that it's out of the way when you're not using it and folds down when you are using it. I did not have to assemble it. It's pretty amazing how they do that. I, I don't know how they do it and uh, it's just a matter of pulling it apart, working it back and forth a couple of times, work that little hinge back and forth. Until it works smoothly and there you go. So that, that's something useful. Also small, uh, it's about two inches by two inches, I guess. The next thing I printed was this tree. This is from some kind of fantasy game. Uh, I don't know anything about the fantasy game. I, I, I know that any fantasy I ever had didn't involve a tree, but there you go. It's a, it's a tree from a fantasy game. Now this took an enormous amount of time. The tree comes in two parts and each part took seven hours, 14 hours to print that tree. I don't, I'm not a designer. I don't know anything about it. I don't know why they designed it the way they did, but that top is solid. Wouldn't you think it would be hollow? It's solid and that's why it took so long. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There's not a gap in there anywhere and it's fairly heavy for a piece of plastic. I suppose it was an easy way to design it rather than designing uh, a, a, an underside that would look more like a tree. I left it in two parts. It, it fits together, snaps together. I left it in two parts because my plan is to paint it. You can paint these things. So I'll probably paint the top some sort of dark green, something like that, and paint the... Uh, the trunk brown that's what it looks like separated and you can see that's just a solid piece of plastic i'm amazed that they did it that way it's uh, the whole thing stands about five inches tall and it's about three and a half inches across it's a it's a cool looking tree careful of your fantasies the next thing i printed was this very cool whistle whoever thought of a whistle i don't know how i came across it or why i did but i thought oh that'll be cool i'll print that out the kids the grandkids will love it there's a little ball inside like there is with any other whistle but the ball is stuck inside there when you first print it out it has to be attached to the piece so you just stick a screwdriver in there and break that ball loose and once you do that you blow on it and I had to immediately print another one. And I'm going to print, I'm going to get a bunch of colors, a bunch of different colors of this filament and print one for all the grandkids uh, in, in their own color. I just love that. And in the spirit of the holiday season, I printed that snowflake. That printed quickly, 25 minutes per side. It's a two-piece thing. Print each side separately and then they, two slides, two sides just slide together. Cute little thing. Now that's all the good, that's all the good stuff I printed. I printed one other thing. It started to look like this as it was printing. It started to look like that, but that turned into this. Just a fine mess. Nothing I did caused that. Well, I mean, I don't mean that. I mean, I mean everything I did caused that. I don't know what I did, but it was definitely my fault definitely not the fault of this machine. Uh, it, it's a multi-part printout that should have been a lathe and in the middle of that lathe bed you go buy a 50 cent pencil sharpener, one of those little plastic pencil sharpeners that you just hold in your fingers, stick your pencil in and sharpen it. Well, it, there's a place on the lathe for it to fit into 
and then you slide your pencil in through the headstock and turn it and sharpen your pencil on your lathe. And I thought, well, that's, that's how I'm going to tie all this to wood turning. And I got to print me that lathe. But like I say, it was a multi-part and I probably should have tried to print them individual parts. I, I don't know, there's about four or five different parts to it. Tried to print them all at once and I got that mess. If I ever get it printed properly, I'll be sure and show it to you because it is totally cool. So there's my collection of goodies that I printed on the longer LK4X. I highly recommend this machine. I don't get anything for telling you that. Uh, I don't get anything if you buy one. Just in the tiniest bit of research I've done, it is one of the least expensive machines on the market. And it's the easiest to use. And it's a lot of dang fun. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you... Uh, Someone locally, about five minutes from my house, was giving away a, a big dollhouse. It's about two feet by three feet, something like that. It's got a porcelain bathtub, porcelain toilet, sinks, floor lamps, tables, chairs, all kinds of cool stuff in it. Well, guess what? I thought, well, I bet I can print furniture for that, so I looked it up. There are thousands, pages and pages and pages of stuff you can print for a dollhouse including the people. You can print anything you want for a dollhouse. I don't do dollhouses, but I'm going to give it to my granddaughter and she probably does dollhouses. We'll find out. But anytime she says, you know, Gramps, can I have a new dining room table? Yeah, whip that right up for her. How about a little baby brother? Yep, he's coming right up. Stand still. Anyway, there you go. So uh, I'll put links down in the description for where you can purchase this. It is on sale, as I think I mentioned. It says $369.99 with a $70 off coupon on Amazon. $299, $300. I, I, I can just about guarantee you'll have fun. I sit here in the evening and look on my phone for things to print and pause whatever I'm watching on TV and run over here and print it up while I'm watching TV. It's so quiet, it doesn't bother me at all. It's just amazing. It's just an amazing machine and a, and a lot of dang fun. And everybody should have one, I think. Okay, that wraps it up. Thank you for your patience. I'll see you back in the wood shop. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Wood Shop, signing off.